because as more big films and more uh, film studios get built here, there's going to be more of a need for a union workforce. And that's what this program is ultimately for, to train these people to join the unions. And I can say we've already had one person who graduated in our first year in 2008. She's already in a professional film union now as a graphic designer. So we've already had major successes coming from this program. So Marty, um, were there at least 100 people in that first group? We had 150 the first year and about 120 the second year. Yep. Okay, but, but you said that there's one person who got a job. One that person who got into, right, one person who got into a <laughs> union. Right. But we had, I'd say, I'd probably about 60% of the graduates of the program have worked on film projects since oh. getting out of the program. Oh, okay. Oh, that's much more so encouraging. Numbers <laughs> are a little better that way. Okay. The unions are very difficult to get into. Okay. Yeah, it's just, you can't, you have to really work toward uh, getting um, membership there. It's like an actor trying to get their SAG card. They will work as extras for a very long time before they get their card. So it's... it's oh, uh, I see. Yeah, the, okay. uh, the guilds of the film industry, I'm sure Marty will agree, are, are not, they're not... I guess I don't want to say they're not welcoming, but they want to make sure that you know what you're doing before they open their door to you. Sure. So it takes a while. Yep. Sure, I understand yep. that. But yep. with, the, with the independent films, so many independent films being made in Connecticut, those are opportunities for these graduates, correct? Yes, and they've taken advantage of them quite a bit. We have films calling actually before the program each year, you know, asking who the, the good graduates are so that they can use them on the projects that they're working on. Very nice. Now, yep. now for these students, after they've gone through this, these four weeks, mm -hmm. Do, do they ever say to you, I've decided, after this four weeks, I've decided, I want to be a director, I want to be a producer, I want to be a cinematographer, I want to be a screenwriter? <laughs> People have told me that before and after the program. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, uh, the, the training program focuses mostly on the craft positions uh, of working on a film set, but a lot of the kids that get into this, you know, they, they have a goal that they want to do something bigger. You know, they, they want to be a writer. They want to end up directing their own stuff. So a lot of people look, as the, look at the training program as sort of a stepping stone to help them get there. And that's great. You know, uh, you know, a number of people have gone on to actually direct independent projects of their own, short films, web series, things like that. So there is sort of, you know, a no, there's a number of paths that you can go coming out of the program. And working in an above-the-line capacity is certainly among them. I imagine that this is an industry that is going to grow in, in shapes and, and sizes that we're not even able to imagine right now. I sure hope so. Because of technology, I think. Mm. So uh, would you say a fair number of them want to be screenwriters, or is that not the case? I, I would say a good number of them want to be screenwriters, and a good number of them are already writing. I'm thrilled to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> As a writer myself, mm -hmm. I have to say, you know, those of you who have watched the other show that I do, Page One, which is a show for writers, know that you know, I'm, I'm a novelist, but I took a course in screenwriting that Peter Fox taught. In fact, I've taken that course several times, learned something <laughs> every time. And if you are a writer, a, a novelist, or, or you're writing short stories, you would do yourself a huge favor to learn some screenwriting techniques. It's amazing how <laughs> helpful they are. So Peter, let me switch Thank to you here for a minute and, sure. and talk with you a little bit about the screenwriting classes that you teach. Now I know that at, you teach at the Bushnell, obviously. Yes. You, you taught your two-day program in, let's see, November of 09. Yes. And in April of this year? No, April, yes. yes and then two. you're going to be teaching again in January of 2011, the two-day mm -hmm. program. However, and this is important for those of you who might have taken that two-day program before, I've convinced Peter to teach an advanced program yes, that's for advanced right. screenwriters. First time I'm doing it at the Bushnell, yes. It's going to be yep, great. great. And that's going to be one night a week on Thursday nights from October, starting October 14th, Peter's birthday, ending on November 18th, my birthday. So we'll have 17 cake. 17-inch neck and 33 <laughs> sleeves. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So we'll, we'll have a party mm -hmm. on both ends. That'll be but, fun. But that, I think, is going to be very valuable for those people who have taken the screenwriting course and now really want to get into some some individual well i think work. it gives them i think you're right and i think that it gives them um an opportunity after getting the um, i guess the the framework for what needs to be done it really gets uh it gets them an opportunity to go into the nuts and bolts of their individual story and get some individualized time uh with me and in a group setting where we uh, spend uh, a significant amount of time on each uh, person who's participating the attendance is very limited because right. we, we want to keep it small be. so that everybody gets 
individualized attention, but uh, by the time they're finished uh, the uh, six weeks, they will leave there with what we call a beat sheet. And um, from that document, the screenplay is produced. So they'll have a working beat sheet by the time they leave there. And it's recommended that they know what they're going to write before they get there. But if they don't know what they're going to write before they get there, um, we can still help them flesh out what they need to do to go to the next step. Because mm -hmm. uh, it's really impossible to sit down and just write a screenplay from concept to execution, finished product in six weeks. There's only about five or six guys in the world um, that can do that. And uh, Joe Esterhouse being one of them, and uh, uh, Shane Black being another. There's very few people in the world that can actually do that process in that short of a period of time, from the time of original idea to the execution of the actual screenplay mm -hmm. document. But um, it really takes about six months to a year to write a really good one. And um, that construction period, that, that development period where you're fleshing out the idea, uh, is the most important time. And once you've done all of the work, the actual writing of the document is, uh, is more cathartic than it is terrifying because you're not writing the document, you're not writing the screenplay as you're writing, your, I should say, you're not writing your story as you're writing your screenplay yes. is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. The story should be already figured out by the time you sit down to write the screenplay. But this, this module gives them a really good opportunity to kind of look out for those, uh, those cliffs that they might fall off of before they go down the road. So. Well, I know after taking your course, now I've been working uh, almost well, you know, several nights a week on the beat sheet for the mm -hmm. project I'm working on, and it is invaluable. A well, and I would take that, and who knows, I might wind up screenplay. But I mean, the idea was that I would use it for my novel, but mm -hmm. you know, who knows? So now I want to get to something very, very important that I wanted to talk with about, talk with both of you about tonight, and to tell all of you in the audience at the Bushnell where I work. We have <coughs> coming up this August our very first filmmakers forum. It's called the Bushnell Filmmakers Forum, the BFF. <laughs> Best friend in the entertainment yeah. industry. Yeah. So this BFF, Bushnell Filmmakers Forum, is going to be held on August 13 and 14. That's uh, Friday night the 13th, Friday the 13th, very lucky day. And Saturday the 14th at the Bushnell, we will be screening three films. One will be Ray, that's that wonderful show starring Jamie Foxx as Ray Charles. Mm -hmm. My gosh, that was so good. Amazing movie. Yes, mm -hmm. and we'll be screening Norma Ray, the story about the uh, textile worker who unionized workers at a mill, in uh, a southern mill. That was really based on the life of Crystal Lee Sutton who died yes. here in 2009. Mm -hmm. and, um, and a third film, not positive of the title yet, I'm, I think I know which one it's going to mm -hmm. be, but I don't want to announce just in case it's wrong. <laughs> but we have some very special guests. And this is one of the things I wanted to really bring to your attention because there's a huge gap between Hartford and Hollywood. Yes. And this Filmmakers Forum is designed to help... Um, help close us, that space. Thank you. Close that yes. space. So at that conference, we will have Howard and, Carol, Howard and Karen Baldwin, who are the producers of the movie Ray. We will have Alex Rose, who is the producer of the movie Norma Ray. We will have Martha Coolidge, who is the director of the movie Rambling Rose, and the delightful movie I just saw the other night, The Prince and Me, mm -hmm. uh, and oh, mm -hmm. lots, of other, lots of other films. So I just don't know for sure which film of hers we're going to screen. Uh, we will also have Peter Miller, who is a literary agent and manager from New York City. So that's so all of you novelists out there, if you think you have a you know, story that you want to pitch to someone who can buy both books and screenplays, you know, think about, think mm -hmm. about coming there because you get that face time with somebody important. And, uh, and there will be uh, at least another agent uh, or more from Hollywood. So do check the Bushnell website, which is www.bushnell.org and look for the BFF, Bushnell Filmmakers Forum, and you'll get lots of you know, updates as, as we get more speakers confirmed. Peter, I want, well, Peter and Marty, I want to ask both of you, <laughs> because we're taking a risk. I mean, at the Bushnell, we really are taking a risk. I mean, we have a long history of film. Most, most people don't realize that, but we had the longest travel film series, uh, longest continuously running travel film series in the country for many, many years. We unfortunately had to discontinue the series here just very recently because with the internet and mm -hmm. Netflix. Mm -hmm. it's Happening everywhere. It's Happening just on television everywhere. too. Sure. Yep.